So I want to show you how to work with icon fonts in Photoshop or Illustrator or well, just about any program, I guess you could say. Uh, but if you're doing web design, a lot of us like to use font icons. It's basically a font that you you know put on your website or you know you can also put on your machine, your local uh, desktop or whatever you're working on. And you can pick an icon and the icons, if you take a look, let me go to this. This is one example, by the way, called Font Awesome. And there's a million different you know companies out there that do this. These little icons are just, they're text. So you can control them with CSS. You can do a lot of things with them. But a lot of times we want it to, to design with them, okay? So how do we do that? Well, if I go back to home here, a font awesome, you can see right here, you can go to that website. You can download it. You can say I've already downloaded it. It downloads a zip file. Let me show you what the zip looks like. I've got a lot of stuff open. If I unzip the zip and take a look inside, we'll see that they give us the CSS. Now, if you're building the website, you can use this CSS right here and basically copy paste it into your style sheet. If you're just trying to design with these types of fonts, if you go into the fonts folder, and this works for a lot of different types of icon fonts, not just font, font awesome, you'll see we have an open type font and a true type. You can just install those on your hard drive, Mac, Windows, whichever one works for you. And just, you know, double click and it'll say, all right, let's install the font, go ahead and install it. And you've got it. Now, once you install it, you can use it within Photoshop and Illustrator. You'll also see that there are the EOT, the WAF, and the SVG. These are for the actual website that you're working on. So you have to, that's a whole nother story, another video, if you will. But once you install the font, I can go to, let's say, Photoshop or Illustrator. You can see I'm using an example right here. Let me delete that. So what I wind up doing is, once I go out and go to my type tool, I just go to the type tool, and I had to click or draw a box. Let me actually zoom in a little more so you can see it a little bit easier here. I'll click or draw a box, there we go. And I'll make sure that I've got Font Awesome. It should be installed. If you don't see it there, when you when you go to find the fonts or search for the fonts, you might wanna quit and restart. It should automatically do it. And then what we can do is we can put in the icon we want. Now, if I go back out to the website, to the Font Awesome website, this is kinda of tricky, but what you wanna do is you wanna to go to this icons page Scroll down a bit, go to the icons, and you're going to see what's called a cheat sheet. Click on the cheat sheet, and you'll see here that you scroll down, you'll see all the different icons. This is kind of weird, but you want to select the icon from here. So I want a barcode. So I'm just going to select the icon. That's it. I'll copy it. Go back over to your program. And what you can do is I've got the, the font in there. Let me actually reset my thing here. Uh, whatever. I'm going to draw another box. <laughs> There we go, font awesome, awesome. And I'm gonna paste it in there. So I'm just gonna paste, and there we go. That's pretty much it. Now there is one little thing to worry about here. You can change the size and all that stuff, but there's one thing to think about or worry about in Photoshop is if you do paste some of these, it's not gonna work. It's gonna switch to Myriad Pro or something like that. If it keeps doing that, if it keeps, you paste one in and it switches, it's because it's not part of the actual font. Photoshop has an issue with that, okay? So in Photoshop anyway, I'm not sure about Illustrator, but Photoshop, you can go to the preferences, and let me quit the type here. Before you paste, go to the preferences for Photoshop and go to the, uh, where am I looking at here? It's in here somewhere, let's see. Um, go to the type category, which makes sense, right? And you'll see enable missing glyph protection. You can turn that off click OK, and then try again, and that should work, okay? But that's it. That's an easy way to be able to use an icon font in your design, and then, you know, using it on the web is a little different story with those other fonts, but at least you can get it going in your design.